Now everybody around the nation, I'm gonna give you some inspiration, some inspiration and stimulation, cause I have to fulfill my obligation to send you on a little vacation, but you don't need a reservation, cause now I need your cooperation without a no a hesitation, cause I got to keep my reputation, see I go by the name of all see the rock, I rock your body around the clock, I'm like a ticket, ticket, tock, ticket, tick, tick, tock, a ticket, ticket, tock, around the clock, and I'm coming at you with the future shock, I got You're checking out the sounds of my man R.C. LaRock. He's also known as the Maestro. This cut is called Radiance, featuring DJ R.C. LaRock, the Maestro. It's one of those raps that goes on and on, and it is. It's one of those raps that are really, really good. That really, just a lot of, lot of stuff in it, and basically he tells a story about just basically, you know, a lot of different things. But the guy is just like really talented. It was like probably one of my favorite uh, rappers when I was growing up. And, um, you know, it was just everything that he was, you know, talking was just basically really, really cool. I play this because, uh, like I said, we're uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And there's only like two more shows in the, you know, this year for me. So we're basically just going to, uh, you know, go through. I actually got one more show where I'm going to play uh, some rap. And then the final show of the year will be the year end show. And I'll be gathering all the information and everything from the past year. And we'll def definitely take a look at everything that went on this year in sports. And there's been a lot of different things, a lot of crazy things. And we'll definitely talk about most of them. You know, we'll get to all of them, hopefully. But you know, a year-in show is basically a lot to pack in. Within an hour, hour and a half or so. Now, I did mention that um, a while back, we're going to be doing some changes. But like I said, I'm going to probably hold off on the changes until after the NFL season. I'm sorry, Maestro, I cut him down a little bit. All right, probably till after the uh, NFL season goes away. Because what I'm working on is basically a uh, one topic uh, publication every week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about one subject and I'm just going to go in and give you all the information about that subject. And I'm, you know, call it, I, I can't tell you what I'm going to call it yet because I got a lot of different things that I'm working on. And believe me, my mind has been going spinning and going out of whack because like I said with work and with uh, a lot of different things that I'm doing and trying to do I got to pack in a lot of stuff and like I said with uh, with trying to make changes within the next two weeks actually it's been what like a month that I've been trying to think of these changes and like I said it's going to take a little bit of time but I will keep you advised and I'll keep you updated and I'll keep you posted on what's going on with uh, this podcast. Because like I said, we're coming up on 200 episodes. And if you're not aware, this is episode 198 of the Guru Talk of Sports podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports. And the name is Gurus, G-U-R-U-O-S. And it means Guru OS means of sports. I think that's kind of simple. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to uh, be doing these changes 
and I'm going to be getting together with a couple of my new friends that basically uh, has been in this podcast game for a long time, so I can basically get some insight and some help, because when I um, thought about this, I said, hey, you know what, if it's going to help me, I'm going to do it. But the thing is, is that change comes, but you know, I like to ease in the change. I don't like to drastically change and have everything just going, you know, differently. And then everybody was like, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. What is this? What is that? You know, so the change is coming. And like I said, I wanted to make sure that um, I get together with, you know, some some friends and um you know, they can give me some pointers and some advice because like I'm, you know, like I said before, I think this is a good thing because I want to make sure that this podcast gets gets a little bit more recognition. And, you know, like I said, this is this is a minor league thing. This is a minor league podcast. But, you know, sometimes you got to take it to the next level. And hopefully with uh, the friends I get in touch with, they can help me, and then I can help them. Whatever they need me to help them with, I'll help them. And if they can help me, that'll be fine. I think we all need a little bit of help once in a while. Uh, who was it that said it? I think it was uh, the Beatles says, I always, I can, you know, get by with a little help from my friends. Quote me if that if that's right or wrong, or so. Anyway, um, this week we got um, I'm gonna talk a little basketball. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the bowl games that are going on. Now I watched a uh, pretty interesting U, uh, UFC fight the other day, and I'm going to talk about that and. NFL picks of the week, and we do have to say goodbye to a couple people. Um, one was George McGinnis. George McGinnis was uh, one of my uh, guys that I kind of idolized when I was growing up. They called him the Big Mac, and he was the original Big Mac. And if people know me, they know me by uh, Garus, or they know me by Mac. And one of the reasons why people call me Mac was because, and I think I explained this to you a while back, when I was uh, starting out driving, driving a truck, there was a uh, manager of mine that always liked George McGinnis. And this is kind of, it plays in the, it goes into play and listen to this. He basically called everybody Mac. Hey, Mac. Hey, Mac. Hey, you, Mac. Come here. And then he started calling me Mac because he couldn't remember my first name. And my first name is not Mac and it's not Gurus and it's something else. But I want to, you know, if my friends know me, they know me by you know, any name, but everybody used to say, you know, this, this, this uh, guy used to say, Hey Mac, Hey Mac, Hey Mac. And then it kind of adopted. And then, you know, everybody told me, asked me what was my nickname or name. And I just said, Hey, it's Mac. So I've been Mac for a long time. I've been the gurus for a while. So anyway, this guy, he was a big basketball fan and he loved loved Philadelphia 76ers from back in the day. And I'm talking about like George McGinnis, uh, Dr. J, uh, who else? Uh, all these other, you know, guys that played on that 76ers team back in the, uh, let's say the, you know, mid-70s, late-70s, early-80s. Um... I'm just glad that he didn't call me World Be Free or Bobby Jones or something like that or, you know, Moses Malone or something. But, you know, this uh, 
this guy, he was always calling people Mac. So that's where the name Mac came from. It was crazy because it's like, you know, he got like 20 guys that he worked work for him. And, you know, he was like, hey, you, Mac, come here, come here. He didn't know anybody's name, I don't think. And he was calling everybody Mac. Hey, Mac, you, Mac. Hey, you, Mac. Come here, Mac. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so that's where that come from. But anyway, like I said, I, I, um, I basically thought about George McGinnis a little while ago. And I was thinking about, uh, you know, what was he doing? What was he up to? You know, I got a lot of friends. I got, I mean, a lot of friends, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. But, you know, some of the some of the guys that, you know, like I said, we, you know, we think about. You always wonder what happened to them or so. You know, a couple months back, we lost uh, Brooks Robinson. I was thinking about him and, you know, come to find out he was, wasn't was doing well. And um, he ended up passing away. George McGinnis was one. That I, like I said, I was thinking about the other one I'm thinking about right now and basically been thinking about was uh, uh, one of my favorite, favorite running backs of all time, even though that he wasn't considered one of the greatest. I loved him because he had flash and flair. And that's uh, Lydell Mitchell. I wonder what he's doing. You know, and like I said, if I, you know, get a chance, I would love to sit down and talk to him because, you know, he, uh, you know, living, growing up in Baltimore, he was uh, one of my favorites, one of my idols. And um, what I did was, uh, you know, I I basically, uh, you know, I have a, I have a very, very deep hatred for the Indianapolis Colts, because they're trying to, I mean, they've, they've already done it. They basically took away all the history from Baltimore. And I really think that that's not fair. And I am one of the guys that are, you know, basically standing, standing up for the Baltimore Colts legacy because Lydell Mitchell Jim Parker, Johnny Unitas, Lenny Moore. Who else? Burt Jones. None of these guys played in Indianapolis. And I don't feel as though that they should have the uh, right to claim the Baltimore Colts legacy and history. I think the Baltimore Colts legacy and history should be sealed and considered for the city of Baltimore. I know they got the Ravens now and, you know. But the thing about it is that, um, like I said, none of those aforementioned names that I, I mentioned never played in Baltimore, you know. That's just like saying Eric Dickerson was one of the, the greatest Baltimore Colts running backs of all time. That's not true. Eric Dickerson never played in Baltimore. Marshall Falk never played in Baltimore. Peyton Manning never played in Baltimore. So how can you claim the history of the Baltimore Colts when you never played in Baltimore? You know, and I was looking at this game yesterday, and they basically had the uh, Colts, old Baltimore Colts logo, and, you know, their throwback jerseys from 1950, 50-something or whatever. And like I said, this this is not, this is false. You know, last Friday, um, I was listening to uh DA show with Mike Babchek, and they were talking about the uh, rivalry between the uh, Titans, 
the Tennessee Titans, and the Houston Texans. Who should claim the name of the Houston Oilers? That is something that is really, really, uh, you know, kind of iffy. Because, you know, Houston has the city, and they have the Texans now. Tennessee used to be the Houston Oilers, and now they're in Tennessee. So, just like Earl Campbell, just like I mentioned with Johnny Unitas, Earl Campbell never played in Tennessee. But, this weekend, Tennessee and Houston are going to play. And guess what? Tennessee is going to wear the Houston Oilers colors. Which is, you know, kind of like, I, I agree with DA. You know, it's kind of like a kick in the face. Because, you know, you're guys that, people that lived in Houston will be coming back and saying, oh my gosh, they're playing in the Oilers. I miss the Oilers and everything. And that starts up another can of worms that we can't really get out of. But like I said, you know, I'm very, very opposed to the fact that The Indianapolis Colts are claiming the Baltimore Colts' legacy. And I think it's wrong. It's purely wrong. So, all right, so we're going to talk about that. Well, talked about that. And the other guy that I did, I mentioned George McGinnis. And the other guy I wanted to mention was Andre Brower. Now, if you don't know him, he was a great, great actor. One of my favorites. And he passed away the other day. And me and him was the same age. And he was born a little bit earlier than me. But same age. And God rest his soul. He was, he was a great actor. First recognized in the movie Glory. He played alongside uh, Matthew Broderick and um, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman. Great movie. I um, I've watched it several times, and um, ever since his passing, I I played back a couple things that he was in. He was in one. The last thing I really remember seeing him in was a. Uh, a television show called Men of a Certain Age, which is pretty cool. He played with uh, Ray Romano, and the show didn't last that long, but, you know, it was pretty interesting, pretty pretty cool uh, show. So we have to say goodbye to both of them, Andre Brower and George McGinnis. Okay. Now... I'm going to talk a little bit about Draymond Green. And, you know, it's the, the, the act is getting really tired. You know, backfisted this guy, you know, Nurkovich, you know, the other night. And now he's suspended indefinitely. You know, why? Why, why, do, why do the league, well, see, the league do, you know, said that, you know, they're not going to put up with this shit anymore. You know, I don't blame him. You know, enough is enough. You know, Steph Curry, you know, all the guys on that team, you know, Thompson's, none of these guys have said anything to this guy. So he basically feels as though that he can walk around and do anything he wants. Is that a little bit of entitlement? Yeah. You know, the thing about it is that, you know, we, as normal human beings, we don't go around punching people or slapping people or doing anything out of the ordinary. You know, because it comes with repercussions. And, you know, any normal human being will be, uh, you know, kind of like uh, aware of their actions And aware of the things that they do. But it seems as though that when this guy gets out on a basketball court, he can do whatever he wants. 
which is not fair. It's really stupid, if you ask me. You know, the thing about it is that, you know, I do like Draymond Green as a basketball player when he's not getting in you know, trouble because he's really educated and he's really knowledgeable of the game. But the thing about it is that he just, as a, uh, you know, he wants to be a tough guy, but then again, I don't know. I think the league is kind of soft, and basically there's like no real enforcers on other teams that can stand up to this guy. So I'm not sure what, you know, what their, you know, what his thought process is about just going around and doing whatever he wants. It's really sad because, you know, the Warriors do need him. The Warriors do need him. But the thing about it is that he's just, his act is just getting really, really tired. And I think he should, you know, kind of reconsider uh, doing these things. Now, hopefully, I don't know if he's suspended without pay or with pay or whatever, but I don't think the uh, NBA Players Association or the, uh, you know, the Players Association is going to, you know, uh, let him sit out a whole year. He's probably going to come back, but then again, He's got to come back with basically a knowledge of, hey, I cannot do this crap anymore, and I got to get my, you know, shit in order, you know, more or less. So, I don't know what what to say about Draymond Green. I'm I'm just kind of lost for words, and I'm just done with it because, you know, Dak is, is really tired now. It's really tired. And we really need to uh, acknowledge the fact that this is really tired. All right, and speaking of basketball, I wanted to uh, mention that the Detroit losing streak is continuing. But the San Antonio losing streak ended. And guess who they ended ended their uh, losing streak with? Yeah, you know it, the Los Angeles Lakers. Even though that they won the uh, in-season tournament, and then they put up a championship banner, that was kind of stupid, wasn't it? Um, San Antonio um, faced off against LeBron for the first time, or Wimbyama, Wimby. That's what I'm gonna start calling him because I, you know, I don't want to mess up nobody's names, and you guys know how Guru messes up names. Wimby. Uh, Played against LeBron for the first time, and it was pretty good. Pretty good matchup. Watched a little bit of it on uh, Friday, and it was pretty cool. But, like I said, the uh, they ended their losing streak. And I think it was at, like, maybe uh, 19 or so games. It was the longest losing streak in the team's history. But Detroit's just keep on going. I think they're up to like 21 or 22 right now. And I, I watched, I looked at the coach. The coach looks really dejected. And, you know, he just looks to the point where he don't he don't even know where he's, you know, where what he can do. But he has to do something because I, I got a feeling that uh, they could probably end up firing him at the end of the, uh, end of the year. Or he might get fired pretty soon or so. All right, so let's go to something else. I'm going to talk about these bowl games. Now, the bowl season started uh, yesterday, Sunday. And right now it's into, uh, I mean Saturday. I'm into Sunday. I'm sitting up here watching uh, Saturday Night Live. And um, I think they're doing their Christmas show. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, it's on right now. It's a, you know it's like twelve thirty or so Sunday morning, and I just wanted to read to you some of these bowl game names. And believe me, this is really this is some really really 
weird stuff. Okay, we know that there's a Myrtle Beach Bowl now. Uh, one of a couple cities that have a bowl game. Los Angeles has a bowl game. The L.A. Bowl. Yeah. Um, the Radiance Technology Independence Bowl. Okay. Now, I hate to say this. I'm an old school guy. I grew up with the, the basic, you know, they didn't have corporate, corporate sponsors years and years and years ago. Where we, you know, we would know that some of the big bowl games would be the Sugar Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl. Uh, what else am I missing? Citrus Bowl, Tangerine Bowl, stuff like that. Sun Bowl. You know, yeah, those are great bowl names. There's about seven or eight that I, I remember that were really, you know, my favorite one is the Rose Bowl. Being an Ohio State fan, the Rose Bowl is like the best one because, you know, it's the granddaddy of them all and all. But now, since we uh, broke up all the uh, rivalries and everything with tradition and everything, uh, well, the Rose, uh, the Rose Bowl now is going to be one of the uh, semifinal games for the championship, for the college football playoff championship. whoop de doo all right, so you got the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl. I'm not sure what that is. Well, Frisco Bowl, I think it's in San Francisco. Believe me. All right, you got bowl numbers that bowls that bowl games. Excuse me. Still a little sleepy. Um, haven't been went to bed yet. I had a nap earlier, but I'm still like really tired. The 76 Birmingham Bowl. And then there's a 68 Ventures Bowl. I'm not sure what that is. Now, here's a bowl that I kind of, you know, know of but because uh, the Surf Pro First Responders Bowl. Okay. Now, I know what first responders are. And I know what Surf, surf Pro is. That's the place that... Or the people that come in and clean up your house after a disaster or a mess or whatever. Um, there's food bowls that we have to let, you know talk about. There's a Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. All right, Tony the Tiger. I guess he's you know cornflakes. There you go. There's a Pop Tarts Bowl, which is I don't I really don't know why they got this bowl, but there's a Pop-Tarts Bowl. There's a Cheez-It Bowl. <laughs> Cheez-It. Oh, man. <laughs> Wasami Fenway Bowl. I guess they play that up in Boston. And that, I guess that has to do with sushi. But the big bowl that... The bowl that I couldn't understand, but then again, I see their trucks riding around all the time. Duke's Mayonnaise Bowl. Yes, the Duke's Mayo Bowl, I'm not sure where the hell they're playing this thing at, but the thing about it is that it's a mayonnaise. They have a bowl named after mayonnaise. Okay. That gets me. Okay, so all these bowl games are being played now. Uh, the first games kicked off yesterday. Saturday. And... Believe me, I, I just, I really didn't, I watched a little bit of the UCLA uh, uh, Boise State game. You know, I got bored with it because there was, uh, there was some uh, other football games on. the fo There was three football games on Saturday, and I watched those too. But all these bowl games are just like really, really crazy. Crazy names and crazy sponsors and all that stuff. Can we just go back to the, the Rose Bowl, the Peach Bowl, the Sun Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, you know, all that. It's, all these corporate sponsors want to get in and, you know, make all their money that way. All right, I did mention that I did watch a UFC fight. 
between Covington and Edwards and, you know, went down to the wire. And uh, I thought Edwards was losing this fight, but he ended up winning. And uh, he won the Walt welterweight championship belt. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to break now because uh, this is basically, uh, I'm going to use this as the end of the first first half. Uh, we're about like 30 minutes in and I'll get, you know, continue to talk. So, you know, I didn't really need to take a break. What I'm going to do is uh, go out and get me some coffee and then, you know, check on um, this guru and the kids and see what's going on. But anyway... Like I said, this is uh, this is it for the first half. Like I said, I wanted to mention that um, you know, like I said, my my podcast friend, Miss Mary Max, she's my podcast sister. She's doing a uh, special on the holidays and you know, you know, grief and basically trying to get over grief and stuff like that during the holidays. And I also want to say Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I will say it again next week because uh, actually next Saturday will be uh, right before Christmas Eve. So I think next Saturday is the 23rd. And, you know, Saturday is the 23rd. Hopefully uh, I won't be on the road by then. I'll be at home, hopefully. Um, Plus... Hanukkah's going on, and I just wanted to say Happy Hanukkah to all my friends that celebrate Hanukkah. I am, uh, I know that there's eight nights, and, uh, you know, lighting of the uh, eight Medora candles, and hopefully I said that right. I don't want to offend nobody, but the thing about it is that um, I'm still, you know, I'm not of the Jewish faith, but I do learn, I try to learn as much as I can about everything around me, you know, and with all the stuff that's going on right now in the world, you know, I want to be educated on certain things, but like I said, um, I'm not, I'm not getting into politics or anything, and that's one of the things I don't, I stay away from, politics and religion. But the thing about it is that we do need some peace in this world. We do. And hopefully with, you know, Christmas and Hanukkah here, we can have some kind of peace in this world. Hopefully we can. All right, so we're going to go to the first half. And I'm going to do what I mentioned earlier. And I'll be right back with you. All right, here's the voice actress lady. And like I said... If we are going to halftime or any break, you'll hear her. Here she is. You're listening to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Welcome back to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. This is episode 198. And like I mentioned before, uh, two more shows at for the end of this year. And like I said, uh, next week will be basically like the last uh, of this. What I'm doing right now is basically, you know, talking about everything, everything in sports. And next, or the week after that, the end of the year, I'll have the end of the year show, which will feature everything that happened this year. The good, the bad, the ugly. We'll say goodbye to you know, our list of people that we uh, are lost, and me, I'm more or less a guy that likes to remember these people, because like I said, they, uh, some of them touch my life, and some of them probably touch your life the same way, you know, and we all have to, uh, you know, cross that bridge, but the thing about it is that we got to make sure that we remember those who left us. Um, when I was, uh, when I was going in to get coffee, I don't know what it is about my little girl, little girl dog. She can sense everything that I do. 
since everything. I'm talking about when I start walking, when I come out of the studio, and then I basically go down the hall, and then next thing you know, she's right there. She's listening. She can be in the room, in the room with, you know, Miss Guru and everything, and next thing you know, boom. She starts, uh, you know, barking and everything. But you know, I um, I love the little girl. She's my she's my girl, and um, she's basically a very very curious, curious little young lady. And that's one one of the things I really love about her. She's always, you know, I could be doing something, and then she'll come in studio or so and then she'll be just sitting there staring at me looking at me what are you doing what are you getting into what are you and she hates noises that i make noises all the time and she gets to the point where she goes or she gets really upset and then i aggravate her a lot i'm sorry i i do but it's just all in love i love her she's i you know i aggravate her all the time but she's a good good little doggy especially her and alex alex is a good dog too but he likes he doesn't like people he doesn't like anything like yesterday had a couple packages come in and stuff like that and what did he do he just basically goes ballistic you know hates delivery people hates anybody come to his door you know we gotta chase him around and you know put him in the back room or something like that but He's something else. See, I love them. I love them both. They're crazy. They're crazy little kids. Anyway, um, we're going to talk a little bit about fantasy football. And my two teams are in the playoffs. Two of my teams are in the playoffs. I'm not sure what the other one is. I'm not sure what the format for Yahoo is right now. If I'm in, I'm in. I'm not, I'm not. Or whatever. But anyway, I am... In the uh, championship uh, finals, I'm not, I mean, in, in the, uh, you know, I get the right, if I, if I win, I move on to the championship game. And right now, me and uh, my son are basically playing it out. And like I told you before, if you remember a couple, a little while back, he's beating me. He, he has a, he's a beast. I mean, he's, you know. Great, great team. I mean, they went ten and two. I basically got in because I had to scratch and claw, and I'm seven and six, you know. And uh, ended up with the, uh, I think it was a fifth seed or something like that. It was only six teams that goes to the playoffs, and uh, we got two guys that have buys. And if I do, if I do get a chance to win, I will face uh, on the other side my other son, and then my. Uh, my favorite, uh, uh, geez, uh, co-worker. Actually, he was my boss. So, you know, I, I, I love Chris. Chris Chris is uh, one of those guys that are, you know, always, he's been loyal, you know, always, you know, professionally and personally. You know, I mean, he's been really, really loyal, good friend. Um, I hate to say it, he's an Eagle fan, but anyway, that doesn't matter, but, you know, like I said, I respect him, I respect him because, uh, he always, always looked out for me when I was working, and, um, I appreciate that, he's a really good guy, really good, anyway, and that's my league, the one that I, uh, I run, my other league, I'm in the, uh, I dropped from second place all the way down to fourth place and I'm leading in my um my um semifinal round. So if I win that one I, I get to play uh the top dog. And in this league he has beaten me twice. So I got some uphill battles to climb and hopefully uh I can make it through. But like I said, um fantasy football playoffs are here, they're going strong and um you know, to all the fantasy players out there, I wish them the best of luck. Um, one guy that I seen yesterday with all the uh, football games that were going on was Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon looked amazing. 
I mean, the guy looked amazing. And I basically, you know, I'm not going to tell you any secrets or anything, but uh, he's probably one of those guys you might have to look out for. You know, if you're going into your playoffs and championship rounds and all like that, that's one of those guys. I am also looking at a couple other guys, but like I said, I'm not going to give out any trade secrets because I do distribute this podcast to my friends in my league, and I talk about fantasy, so I want them to know that, you know, I love them and all, but I'm not going to give up any trade secrets, like I said. (laughs) All right, so, you know, I haven't given out the top five in football in a while. But before I go into the NFL picks of the week, I am going to give out that top five. And the top five has changed really dramatically, you know. With At number one, we still have San Francisco. San Francisco has been proven to be uh, looking like the best team in the league. And I got them ranked at number one. I got the Cowboys ranked at number two because they, they had a big win last week. Oh, yeah. And the Eagles, uh, I picked the Eagles last week to win. They didn't win, so I don't know what's going on with Philadelphia, but they dropped all the way down to fourth. And ahead of them will be the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens, oh, they play Jacksonville today. That's going to be a tough game. All right. I like both teams, and like I said, hey, look, I'm from Baltimore. I've been a Jacksonville Jaguar fan since 95. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for me to watch. It's going to be hard for me to to root because, like I said, I do. Jacksonville needs to win this game because, uh, if you didn't know, yesterday Indianapolis is coming on, and they basically won their game. They beat Pittsburgh yesterday, and they are – basically almost they're like a game behind Jacksonville actually they might be a half a game back behind Jacksonville I think they got eight they're eight and seven or something like that or or they're they got to be like seven and seven or something I don't know I'll look at the schedule or the you know, standards but Miami will come in fifth so I got San Francisco one Dallas two Baltimore three Philadelphia 4, and Philadelphia fan, I'm telling you this right now, it's not because I, I'm, not, I'm not a hater, and I, you know, you dropped a couple games, you dropped a couple key games, and basically, like I said, I picked you on those games, and you let me down, but anyway, um, Philadelphia is 4, and Miami is 5, Miami does look really good, and we'll you know we'll see what they do uh, against the Jets. Who I don't know. I think the Jets are you know the Jets are the Jets. A lot of controversy, a lot of talking. Okay, so we got the top five out of the way. Now let's go to the picks of the week. And when I do the picks of the week, I always ask the voice actress lady to come on. And here she is. And now it's time for Guru's NFL Picks of the Week. Thank you, voice actress lady. All right, so NFL Picks of the Week. And like I said, you know, the Guru, he went undefeated last week. No problems. All the games he won, he won those games. All right, so let's go back to Thursday and yesterday. Thursday night was a royal, uh, let's say this, it was a royal ass kicking, and it was led to one of the things that I guess Charger fans have been looking for for the longest time. The dismissal of their GM and their coach, Brandon Staley, who claimed to say that he was the, uh, the defense have not getting, got blown out, but they did. So, 
Good luck in your next adventure, and I don't think that he's going to be a head coach anytime soon. Okay, so you got Raiders look unstoppable, and you know the old the 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 saying was that they went from zero to sixty three in a matter of five days. Yes, they did. They, I mean, after getting shut out three to nothing. They looked great. They looked amazing. And, you know, the two running backs that they had were guys that you might want to pick up on your fantasy team as well. But I want to say this. The quarterback, he looked pretty good. You know, the coaching staff, I mean, Antonio Pierce might have this thing wrapped up. And I would like to see him be become the new coach of the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. They beat blew out, like I said, the Chargers sixty three to twenty one. Their defense looked amazing. They were getting stops. They were getting interceptions. One interception just basically looked like the uh, interception from the Super Bowl when Jack Squarek, uh intercepted a pass from Joe Theismann and walked into the end zone. That's how bad. This game got out of hand. And the thing about it is that the Raiders didn't just win this game. They basically beat the crap out of the Chargers. And it looks like the Chargers just basically gave up. You know, they, they just basically got their, their butts kicked. Their asses kicked pretty, pretty bad. All right, so... Going back to the three games that we had yesterday, the first game was the Minnesota and Cincinnati game. Cincinnati won that one uh, 27-24 over Minnesota. Minnesota looked pretty good. I started Nick Mullins in one of my fan, in both of my fantasy leagues, and uh, he looked pretty good. Um, another guy that I'm going to mention, I picked up. I'm going to mention that when we get to his team. All right, um... The second game was the middle game was Pittsburgh and Indianapolis. And like I said, Indianapolis is moving forward. They, they've they been looking pretty good. They beat Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has no answers. They didn't, you know, bench Trubisky and they brought in Mason Rudolph. And, you know, they basically look terrible. They beat them 30 to 13. And one of my favorite uh, names, Mo Alley Cox, caught a couple touchdowns. <laughs> Mo Alley Cox. Every time I think of a guy named Mo, I think of one of the three Stooges. <laughs> That's basically how it is. All right, and the last game was uh, Denver and De- uh, Detroit, and Detroit blew them out, forty-two to seventeen. One of the things I noticed about uh, Denver is that Sean Payton does. You know, he's he's really a hard ass. And I saw him sh- and just laying into uh, 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 Russell Wilson after uh, a play. And, you know, I, I got to admit, I got to admit, uh, something else, man. <laughs> this I mean, this team, uh, Denver now, has played better. But like I said, Sean Sean Payton is uh man, he's 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 something else. He's really, really tough on these guys. All right, so let's go to the uh NFL picks of the week. And like I said, I always use uh my favorite um betting site, and that's uh Bet MGM. And also um I did pick up the new ESPN uh, app, and I'm going to be start. You know, I'm starting a uh, starting to bet on that one. Um, like I said, with BetMGM, I still have a really nice, comfortable uh, cushion that I can use, and I just, like I said, I put a little bit down on my uh, new app, ESPN Bet, Bet ESPN. That's what it's called, one or the other, and um, I'm going to mess around with that app for a little bit, and see how it works. Okay, so starting off, we got Chicago is in Cleveland to play the Browns. Give me, 
after what I've seen last week with the Browns, they started Joe Flacco, they beat my Jaguars, and they basically looked like they had Jacksonville's number. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to take the three points and give me the three points with Chicago. They're sneaky good. And only reason why I'm not going to, I think Joe Flacco is going to come down with a, uh, uh, maybe a uh, Joe Flacco of old game when he's with, was with the Jets or so, maybe. Or we could see the Joe Flacco of the Baltimore Raven days. Never know. All right, so. We're going. I'm gonna go with Chicago on that one. Tennessee is home against the Texans, and like I said before, this is a uh, rivalry, and a you know stick it in your face game for the Oilers name and rights or whatever. So I'm definitely gonna go with uh, Tennessee. Looked better. They looked a lot better. C.J. Stroud might not play in that game, but I still think that ten- te- the Texans. The Houston Texans will make it and win that game. All right, I'm going with the Texans. Uh, Kansas City is an eight and a half point favorite. Uh, matter of fact, Tennessee was a three point favorite. Chicago or Cleveland was a three point favorite. I didn't give you the odds on those. All right, Kansas City is a eight and a half point favorite over New England. New England looked uh, pretty sharp last week. They won, but I still don't think that. They have enough for Kansas City. Kansas City's coming off that controversial game with Buffalo. And we saw Andy Reid and we saw uh, Patrick Mahomes blow up for the first time. So I'm definitely going to go with Kansas City there. And I think that Tony will be lined up on sides this, this week. And I think they went through that a lot in practice this week. All right, so give me Kansas City laying the eight and a half. Atlanta and Carolina, uh, Carolina, uh, I hate to do this, but I don't think you're going to win any more games. Give me Atlanta and lay in the three points. Tampa Bay and Green Bay, uh, Green Bay looked a little sluggish last week. And Tampa Bay, eh, not too bad, but I think I'm going to go with uh, Green Bay, laying the three and a half points. Give me Green Bay and the three and a half points. All right, the Giants are going into New Orleans. New Orleans is a five and a half point favorite. And like I mentioned before, I like this guy, Tommy DeVito. You know, Tommy Chicklets, Cutlets, or whatever they call him, and, you know, all this thing. You know what? I've, I've listened to a lot of sports talk radio, and I listen to all the stuff about, you know, him being Italian and doing the, you know, the, the, the hand gestures and everything. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean nothing to me. That doesn't mean anything. If the guy can play, I don't care if he's pink or blue. You know, if he can play, he can play. You know, I stop all this stuff about you know his heritage and all that stuff like that. You know, the guy's a football player, and if he can play, he can play. I like him. I think he's you know something. You know, he's better. He's been moving the offense a lot better than. Uh, uh, Daniel Jones have so with that I still think New Orleans is going to win this game I'm going to lay the five and a half points and give me New Orleans there at home New Orleans I know they haven't been really really good I don't I don't know all right New York Jets the Jets looked pretty good last week didn't they they won Zach Wilson threw the ball around you know from one New York team to another I like the Jets, but Miami's going to cover that eight points. Raheem Moster should break a record today or so, and I'm going with uh, Miami. All right, got to pick it up here. The Rams are going to play at Washington. Washington is not playing for anything at 4 o'clock. It's only three games in the 4 o'clock window. Give me the Rams and the six and a half points. San Francisco is going to blow out Arizona. Arizona is a 12 and a half point underdog. Give me uh, San Francisco in that game. Buffalo is a two point favorite at home against Dallas. I don't know. Give me Dallas. Give me Dallas. They, they look pretty good after what they did to the Eagles last week. 
The 8.30 game is the uh, Baltimore Ravens and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hard game to pick. Hard game to pick. I'm going to take the three points in Jacksonville. They're playing in Jacksonville. They usually don't play good at home, but we'll see. And Baltimore is the top of the AFC. And this could mean, this is big for both teams. But I'm give me, give me the three with Jacksonville. Monday night, Philadelphia's flying out to Seattle. Philadelphia's had some problems. They got really, really big problems. So they should try to uh, get those problems taken care of. I'm going to go with Philadelphia laying the three on Seattle. I hate to say it, but yeah, I'm going to go with that. All right, so we're done. I got Chicago, Houston, Kansas City, Atlanta, Green Bay, New Orleans, Miami, Philadelphia, Jacksonville, Dallas, San Francisco, and the Los Angeles Rams. Okay, that is it. We are done. And like I mentioned before, we got to say goodbye to Andre Brower. He was in a lot of good movies. Glory was his uh, breakout uh, show, breakout movie. Um, Homicide, Life on the Streets, he played in, uh, you know, Law and Order. Go to his IMDb page because it's remarkable. He was a great actor, and we um, we have to say goodbye to him. He was 61 years old. George McGinnis was 73, and you know I looked at his uh, career stats and his every you know all the stuff that he uh, he he did. He went to the University of Indiana, and um, he ended up playing for the Indiana Pacers of the ABA, and. He basically earned a lot of uh, honors. He was the ABA Most Valuable Player in 1975. He won two ABA championships. He played with the Philadelphia 76ers. And he was also named to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame as well. So we have to say uh, so long to uh, George McGinnis, the Big Mac, as he was known. And one of the things that I really liked about George McGinnis is that um, he was a very, very nice guy. Uh, Mr. Indiana Basketball in 1969, uh, first team All-American 1969. Number 30 is retired by the, I think it's retired by the uh, Indiana Pacers and not the Philadelphia 76ers. But the number 30 has always been one of my favorite numbers. He played with Indiana, Philadelphia, Denver, and Indiana again in the uh, in the uh, NBA as well. All right, so we're done. And I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for everything that you do, and I appreciate you. Um, like I said, next week will be final show of uh this this year and like i said on the uh 30th we'll have the year in review which will be the, actually the final show you can find me at the guru of sports show on youtube uh gurus daily shorts on facebook check me out on gurus g-u-r-u-o-s it means guru of sports email me at Gurus Daily Shorts at gmail.com. Check me out on uh, X or Twitter. Twitter seems right. Um, I'm at on Twitter. M A C K G T S underscore BB39. Call the program if you want. Call me. 302-267-3106, 302-267-3106. Got to give big shouts and props to following Mary Mack, Hector Washington Heights, Jeff Duarte, my cousin Curtis, um, my man Danny Rivera, JP, the TPC and the Three Sheet Cinema. I got to give shouts to you guys. 
all the DLs, all the fouls. And my main man, Mr. Dave May Jr., appreciate you. Always insightful. And I know that you were laughing when uh, the Raiders were kicking that butt the other night. That was a good win. All right, got to say, uh, the crew, me, Dante, and Caden, and rest in peace to Cousin Aaron, always. This has been a Black Goat production for Black Goat Sports, copyright 2023, all rights reserved. We don't hate, we congratulate, we always create, we always create, excuse me, and we don't steal from nobody. Use the hashtag Big Props and Guru Talking Sports. All right, that's it. I know we're out of here. You guys have a great day, great Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your sports weekend and watch some basketball, watch some uh, football. I know I didn't mention any hockey, but we'll you know we'll talk about that soon. Like I said, the NFL takes up so much of our time, so much of what's going on in the NFL. That's you know it's overwhelming. But you guys, thank you for your time and. Like I said, we got some things going on. We're working on some things. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm on Snapchat at GMAC. I'm on Threads at The Gurus. 39 at Threads.net. All right. I had to punch that, punt that in there, put that in there because I forgot it. But anyway, you guys take care. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And stick with us. Like I said, this is episode 198 of the Guru Talking Sports program. We'll be back next week with episode 199. And then the 200th will be the year in review and all the special stuff we got. You guys take care. We appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Later. <laughs>